Okay, well, hello, uh, Freedom Church. My name is Robert Duvall, and I have been asked to speak to you all about the workings of the Holy Spirit before Pentecost. Now, I'm going to be talking today on that subject mostly about something that's very important to me, and it is taking a leap of faith. You know, I have had the pleasure to walk with God and trust Him in beautiful and difficult circumstances, and seeing Him work through all of that has been the biggest value of my life because I've seen Him come through and do incredible things, and I know that what God inspired me through this for was that you also would trust Him with more that you would have the opportunities to pursue the things that He shows you by faith, and then God will show you that He is the one who can do incredible and impossible things. So I wanted to start off today by talking about the beauty of faith, and something that comes to my mind always is this beautiful and innocent faith that Mary had. Now, we all know the story that Jesus came born of a virgin, but Mary had the opportunity presented to her to believe God for something that is literally impossible. So it starts off in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, and it says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at this, his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? Then the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God, now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for who, her who is called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now, it's so simple but difficult because believing a stranger that just appears in your home for something as impossible as uh, giving birth to a child, a virgin giving birth to a child, but she believed. And in this, you see that favor and blessing was giving her an opportunity for a choice of faith. She was already considered blessed because of the leap of faith she was able to take. Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you among women that she was blessed with this opportunity to bring into the world the Savior, God's Son. Now, there's this uh, beautiful name for her. Uh, in 
different areas of the faith where you have Orthodox and Catholics, old theology, they refer to her as Theotokos, which is the mother of God. And it's just a, a beautiful thing that she was able to have the honor to be able to trust God. It wasn't a, bit, a burden for her, but any time God asks us to trust him, we're being given honor and we're able to honor God with our choices. So there's beauty in the response of your yes. Now, when you consider that it's not anything that we do that is going to accomplish it other than our obedience, but it says that in verse 35, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. So the Holy Spirit was accomplishing this impossible task. But you're always going to have the option of yes or no. God's not forcing us into anything. He might make our way show very clearly what he wants, but you always have the choice. So taking the opportunity and trusting him, even in simplistic and innocent faith, is always going to be the best option personally. That's what I feel. And that's what I experience. I, um, I had a day when I was just going grocery shopping. This is a little testimony of uh, a man with simplistic, innocent faith. And at the time, I had not paid my tithes, hadn't given an offering. And so in my mind, God, I owe you money. In my mind, I'm thinking, I have to get to this opportunity, give God back because he's given to me. And um, so I'm coming out of the grocery store and there's a man who is sitting in front of the grocery store on a bench and he's just sitting with his head down. And he's not looking at anyone. I see him, see it's kind of strange. And I just kind of walk past, go and put my groceries into the car. Uh, but God, God's spirit starts to pull at me as like, go talk to that man. See what's, what's going on. See if he's uh, okay, depressed or something. And I went to speak to him and uh, the man actually just opened up to me. And he told me that he had recently lost his job. He's always had work and he needs to provide for his family. And he had nothing to put any food into his house. So he decided that he said, God, you're my provider. You're the one who has to bring me what I need. And I can't beg. I can't bring myself to ask people for help. So he sat in front of this grocery store and he sat there with his head down and waited for God. And God pulled me back and I spoke to him, I was like, well, that's, uh, that's very interesting because I actually owe God money and I feel like he wants me to give it to you. So I was able to take part in something that God was, God was doing. He was extending kindness and allowed me to be part of it. Part of this man's faith was God accomplished what he promises he'll do, being a provider for this man. So going back to Mary, there's something she says in this verses, it's either called the Song of Mary or uh, the Magnificat. And in verse Luke chapter one, verse 49, it says, for he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. So your faith is an act of service to God, but it's also doing something great for you. You're, you're given the opportunity to see God move and do great things for you. The Holy One, the creator of all the earth, wants you to serve him willingly, but your obedience is a reward even to you. You start to see the outcomes in every area of your life. Now, it's not to say that faith always looks like something beneficial. So I'm going back and there's a beautiful story in the Bible. If you haven't read it in Genesis chapter 41, 
37 to 40, we go to a man named Joseph. Now, Joseph was a dreamer. He was someone who wanted to honor God. And he spoke about these dreams that God gave him, and he believed. Now, his belief didn't put him in a situation that looks good. In fact, because of how he spoke about his dreams, it put some, uh, some controversy between him and his family, and he ends up in prison. But in this place, he was still given a position of honor. So in chapter 41 of Genesis, verses 37 to 40, it says, uh, well, Joseph at this point has risen out of prison and ended up at Pharaoh's side from following his dreams and acting on them and trusting God in interpretation. And Pharaoh notices it. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Because right now, Pharaoh is asking not only advice, but interpretation of a dream that is going to affect all of Egypt. So Joseph's obedience and trust in God is going to affect countless people. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. Now, what it took for Joseph to get to this point was simply trusting in God and the Spirit of God was with Joseph because of his trust. Now, being in prison, being sold into slavery, being accused of things falsely, these are all experiences that Joseph had to go through in order to be put into this position to still trust God. So his circumstances and his situation wasn't what mattered, but it was that God was with him and he was faithful. So faithful that he places Joseph in the highest position of authority, other than Pharaoh being above him. But in God's eyes, even Pharaoh's life is being saved right now. And so he delivers his family, he delivers the people of Egypt, and a blessing is on all of the land because of Joseph's decision to trust God with his faith, taking a leap of faith even there. And it does beautiful things by the Holy Spirit for everyone. So the Holy Spirit has been working even before Jesus' resurrection and the Holy Spirit being poured out on Pentecost, but it was in more rare instances. You've been chosen to have the Holy Spirit with you all the time, and we take it sometimes for granted how much honor you've been granted by having the Spirit of the living God inside of you constantly. Now, I want to talk about Moses. Moses is led by the Spirit of God through some of the most difficult circumstances, and God uses him to deliver his people. So his choices and his journey is all about obedience. Moses isn't always able to walk it out perfectly, but he never departs from God, and he, in general, accomplishes what he's supposed to be doing. So in chapter 14, verse 13 through 16 in Exodus, Moses is at a crossroads, not really a crossroads, but he's in between a rock and a hard place. Pharaoh is in pursuit of all the children of Israel after they've been released from captivity. 
So Moses says to the people, and Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. So leaps of faith at this point are almost always going to look impossible. That's why it's faith. There is no reasonable expectation of looking at the sea and thinking we can escape danger through this impossible situation. So it doesn't matter if it looks good. You're given an actual good situation as long as you're able to hear God's voice and to trust him. He's going to do the impossible through you or for you because of his faithfulness. And it's always by his Holy Spirit. And you see the Holy Spirit move the most when you're taking these leaps of faith. So obviously what comes after this is the Red Sea is split open and the people are able to travel through safely on dry ground. And Pharaoh is a character that you'll never see again. I, uh, I've had a few different wilderness journeys that I was able to go on. And they were really beautiful, but they weren't always easy situations. But you kind of get into the rhythm of it after making different choices of faith. They become things you're more accustomed to do. Like it becomes part of your nature, an instinct to trust God. So there was this period of time when I was traveling and living by faith. I didn't have money at the time, but I was traveling and depending on God's provision. And he always came through. Uh, I was at this place called, um, well, it was a missionary base in California. And I was traveling north through the state, just uh, on kind of an expedition with God. And at this place, I had been there for a while. Uh, about a month I spent with them and they took supplies from different farms and sent them all over the world to help feed the hungry. But one day God said that it was time for me to leave. I'd made a lot of friends there. They even hosted backpackers that some were Christian, some weren't. And uh, I got to make some good acquaintances and friendships there. And there was this man named Lewis. And at the time I told them that I was ready to leave, Lewis and uh, a few other of the backpackers were gonna go north to Yosemite, or Yellowstone, Yosemite. Well, they were going to a big uh, park in, in California. And I had zero money. I had... <laughs> Nothing to my name, but in order to travel with them there, uh, we'd need to rent a vehicle, get accommodation to stay in the area. Um, so for me, it was impossible, but I was trying to witness to Lewis and to some of the other backpackers. And I told them that I'm leaving. I'd like to go with you. And I told him that God would provide for me. And so... Of course, we're getting ready to go, and there was this day we had breakfast together, and everyone gathered together for breakfast, for some worship, and uh, at the last minute, they get up and say, our friend Robert is leaving us today, and so we just wanted to let you all know. And sitting there, and I'm enjoying breakfast, I'm, I'm very, you know, kind of shy, but happy about them saying goodbye uh, together. And all of a sudden, a group of people got up and they started to sing to me. 
The blessings of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. And they just sang to me. And as they sang to me, people started to come up and just hand me money and different offerings. Um, as this guy Lewis was sitting beside me. And it was one of the most beautiful moments because I was trusting that God could provide for me. And in front of the person that I witnessed to, that God is faithful and a provider and he'll take care of me, he put me in a place of love, beauty, honor, and he provided. And so I went with them from this this missionary base and we traveled north and we stayed at this beautiful uh, park and then afterwards I was able to leave them and continue my journey but from then on they would remember that what I spoke God fulfilled and it was just about me listening to God and wanting to go where he said that we had to go so your trust, your trust in God has to become an action. You know, trusting someone is, is always going to be tied to a response in, in the way that you act, especially with God, especially with your faith in Jesus. This is your first leap of faith to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that He's been resurrected for the dead after suffering, and that God is there for you in everything through this faith in Jesus. So when you trust God and you believe that everything is possible through Him, then your actions should follow. Your actions should grow in that direction in trusting in the words of Jesus as well. And when God calls on you, through His Spirit that lives in you, that you take that action and you have the opportunity to see God move. Now I want to go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 13 to 16. In chapter 11, This, uh, there, there's a, hmm, an exposition of different people who live by faith. Talking about Abel, Noah, Abraham, and others. But in verse 13 to 16, it says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland, and truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. You're part of a heritage and a beautiful people, people God has been protecting and watching over, watching over his word and faithful to protect and guide even so faithful to be beyond death, to raise us and bring us back to Him. You've been given a position of honor by having the Holy Spirit. And God is just not ashamed of those who are led by faith. To think of that, that God has this, this eye, this, this watchful eye over you, 
for the way that you lead your life so that he is unashamed to be called your God. So asking ourselves this one question is important. How can you trust God more? How can I trust him more? And the opportunities will be there. God doesn't leave anyone out of it. So just remember, whenever God gives you an opportunity to be led by the Holy Spirit, His blessings and His favor follow you, after you. They always follow. Favor blessings. Favor blessings. And you're going to honor Him in your life. Now, since faith can look both like risky choices and also sometimes simplistic and beautiful choices, in Romans 8, verse 28, it says that all things, we know that all things work out for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purposes. So I want to challenge you all that you would get yourself filled with the Holy Spirit and look at opportunities and places where you can trust God more. Look at these places where you can hear His voice and obey Him. The Holy Spirit is the most precious gift you can be given because God is living with you. And so we're part of this giant family of faith. We're part of God's household, and He will uphold His Word in your life, and He'll be with you. Even in the most difficult circumstances, He will shine a light, and He will lift you up in His time. Just trust in His Holy Spirit. So this, all of these things happened before Pentecost. All of these things happen by people chosen by God. You as well, if you can hear my voice, you should remove all doubt because God has chosen you and called you to a life of faith, to a life filled with the Spirit of God, to change the world and to watch the living God operate and move on your behalf in this world so that you can honor Him, so that you can glorify Him, so that you can lift Him up, so that the name of Jesus will be praised, so that people will grow in faith just by watching you. And it will be amazing. You see, I get filled with this excitement because whenever I see something difficult or whenever I'm given an opportunity to move for God, I get to see Him. And it's always exciting. In the end, you see something that is beautiful, his faithfulness, his goodness, his mercy, his truth. God is a God of our people, the people of faith, those who believe in Jesus Christ. He's a God who honors his promises. He watches over Israel. He watches over the Jewish people and he has intentions to fulfill all his word to bring his people back to him. He looks after the lost sheep. And through the Holy Spirit, you'll be given opportunities to act as his hand, act as his faithfulness, to display his mercy and his love, just like he's shown it to you in so many different opportunities. Don't look back at your life and think, what if? Like, what, what could have happened if I just would have trusted God? I, that's one of my biggest fears, is that I will look back at a promise that God gave me, and because I couldn't see it or believe it, I would have backed down and then thought for the rest of my life, what if? What could have happened? I don't want to reach that point, and I don't want any of you to reach that point either. So trust Him, trust Him, and allow Him to show you His glory.
Don't worry about if you have everything that you need. God owns everything. He has control of every situation and circumstance. So because you have the Holy Spirit, you have everything that you need. One thing I notice with, uh, as a difficulty with people who desire to become missionaries is there's always the, the problem believing for finances. People always say, well, I'll prepare, um, but right now I just can't afford it or I'm worried about the money. When God can provide this, then I can do it. And it is probably the most <laughs> difficult thing for people to get past, but also in a way it's, I don't want to say foolish, but um, it's just not trusting much because God can always provide. And in fact, when I do the same thing and I doubt, like God has to send me in a certain direction, I'm like, well, I don't have the money for that. God generally provides a way for me to get there for free, opens up different areas of favor and provides everything that I need. So now I just stop talking to him about money because he always provides it. And I just end up repeating myself <laughs> and it's kind of a si silly situation or discussion to have back to back when he's already so faithful in everything that he speaks. So look to God and trust him. Pray, read the scriptures and listen for his voice. When you pray, give yourself some time to be silent and to listen for him. Because when he gives you a direction, when he gives you an opportunity, by filling yourself with the words of God, by filling yourself with the Holy Spirit and listening to his voice, you'll be more prepared when he does ask you to do something. So I hope one day that I can hear some of your opportunities, some of your testimony that God has come through for you and that the people that are beside you will be affected, greatly affected by your faith. This is all I had to share with you today. So I'd just like to pray for you and encourage you to go forward, move in faith, and do the impossible through God. Father, I just thank you that you look on our lives with your favor and your blessing, and you give us the opportunity to hear your voice, to walk by faith, and you come through. I bless your holy name for you who, you who are mighty. You have done great things for us. God, we are glad that we're able to be called your children. We are glad that we're given opportunities to praise you, to know you, and to trust you. Please, let everyone who hears my voice, let their faith go through the roof. I ask for the gift of faith, supernatural faith, to fill them, guide them, and that they would be filled with your Holy Spirit and move forward with boldness to do your will and that they would be able to see you when, you're, when you move, that you give them a childlike heart so that they can see your kingdom, and that they would bring praise and glory to your name. And I pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.